Good evening and welcome to this evening's Brookfield Selectman's meeting of January 14th, 2020. Would you like to uh, rise and join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing on our agenda tonight is to approve uh, warrants. I would like to, uh, I'm going to read them all and yep. we can vote on them all. Yep. I'd like to ratify an expense warrant for 12-17-19 for $383,069.32. Ratify a payroll warrant for 12-18-19 for $172,876.22 and ratify an expense warrant for one two twenty for $61,162.27. Ratify a payroll warrant for one two twenty for $154,418.09. Approve an expense warrant for one fourteen twenty for $142,735.94 and approve a payroll warrant for one fifteen twenty for $165,119.47. Do I have Mo a motion? Mo motion to approve based on what you read. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'd like a motion to approve uh, Selectman's minutes. Motion to approve. From 11, 19, 19, and 12, 13, 19, there's two sets of them. Yep, motion to approve. Second. Any, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then I would like to acknowledge minutes and reports from other departments. The CIPC minutes, grant writer monthly report, report December 2019. Fire Department Monthly Report 1219 and EMT Monthly Report 1219. Motion to acknowledge. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Announcements. We have a, a, win a winter parking ban is in effect through April 1st from the hours of 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. There shall be no parking on any streets, allow selectmen or ice also, snow or ice has to be removed from driveways, sidewalks, private property, shall not be plowed, shoveled, or blown across the public way, street, or roadway. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to bring up on ending announcements? No? Okay. Uh, we're going to, what we're going to do, we're going to, because uh, the hearing is until 645 for the CDBG, so we're going to do the financial update. So, Laurie and Sarah, if you'd like to come up. Um, all of you pretty much know Laurie, but this is Sarah Hunter. Sarah is our slash uh, consultant treasurer, and so they're both going to speak tonight and let us know, you know, what the fi how the finances are going. Well, um, I'll start quickly. Um, everything on the account side is going well. Um, we've made a lot of progress. We've got in the fiscal year 19 receivable, they're just about finished. We've made a lot of progress today working on tax title with the collector and has recognized all of the differences. We believe we're just missed postings in the account. Um, the prior account was posting principal um, rather than interest, interest rather than principal. Um, we located, we believe, everything that was missing. Um, so now we just need to make the correcting entries, which I'll do over the next day um, day or so. Is that for 2019? Okay. Yes, for fiscal year 19. I started into fiscal year 20 on receivables and have made it on the collector side through December, which is where I'll end um, for the collector. Um, as of right now, I am doing both sides. As I explained before, I'm doing the collector side and the accountant side. I'm going to end in December to catch us up. I can't do anything on the accountant side yet um, because we are behind on posting receipts um, with Holly in the office. We're going to go over that as well. Um, once I catch up the accountant side through December, I'm going to work with Brenda on training her on how to do January through going forward. 
Um, that way there will be a true checks and balances system working with the collector. Um, I was able to speak with the auditor that we were hoping to use, Tom Scanlon. I spoke with him last week. He is interested in coming to town and doing the audit. However, as I had previously said, um, and assumed I'd hear from him, he is not interested um, in coming in the spring. It is not feasible for him to come in February or March because it is audit season for all other towns mm -hmm. that are currently on an audit schedule. He thinks that this will be more than just a standard one month type of project. He would like to start the audit over the summer beginning in probably June or July. And his, the way he would like to handle it, having our firm in here as well as Sarah's in here doing fiscal year 19 and in order to save the town some money, he would like to start in fiscal year 19 only and then if he sees issues arise in fiscal year 19, he will work backwards as needed. Um, the point of doing this is because our firm closed fiscal year 18 and did our own auditing of fiscal year 17. All of the issues we found in fiscal year 17, fiscal year 18, have been carried forward and called out in fiscal year 19. So he'll be able to see every issue that we've found. The approximate cost for him to do a one-year audit for fiscal year 19 will be $15,000. If we're required to go back another year, it will be the same cost for an additional year. Um, that's his goal. He thinks it will take probably the majority of the summer to complete. He said if there's any issues that we need additional years tacked on for borrowing purposes, um, we can do that at that time. He did say that whereas we've been borrowing one-year bans for the last however many years with no audit, one-year audit should be adequate to at least continue with the ban process. Exactly. Although, so but that comes due prior to when it our does. ban, so the, our ban comes due prior to when the audit would start. Exactly. So our ban comes due in May. Um, but we can let them know that we do have a scheduled audit. So I did let them know that after we met tonight, as long as everybody was on board, we could at least be put on a schedule yeah. for sometime in June. Okay. Absolutely. So, and, and if they started in June, they wouldn't finish until July anyway. So if we fund it for <coughs> next year's fiscal they would year. We actually finish sometime in August or September before we actually receive the audit report. Right. Okay. Jeff? Lauren, um, are there any other options that were there is other auditing firms. Um, the firm that I work for does prefer to work with Stanley. He's a very thorough auditor. Yes. I worked with other firms um, doing yeah, he's auditing as well. He's worked, yeah, they're, um, they're good as well. Um, there's pros and cons to looking around. We just completed a five year audit in another town that went very well. Um, Tom also. Um, <coughs> has uh, experience working with Justin Cole's books, who's basically <coughs> the uh, gentleman that was your accounts consultant, so he knows things to look for, things that we're going to call out in our books. Um, he's our preferred choice. He has audited your books before as well. Yeah. Just a, a follow-on. If you, if you were explaining him as far as we're trying to move towards long range and we're just having a one year rather than having this other thing that we talked about before and any impact and how that would be perceived. So after we receive, after we do the one year audit of fiscal year 19, we need to get onto a schedule of getting your mm -hmm. audits. So as soon as we close fiscal year 20's books, we get into an audit um, schedule of doing spring audits as every other community does. So we'd be on a schedule somewhere between March and June of doing fiscal year 20's books the following year. Okay, so as long as we're back with some sort of we schedule, need to be back five, schedule. Gap, when exactly. it would be a problem. Right. Yep. Thank you. So, so from a budget perspective, mm -hmm. it's in your budget or it's in our budget? It would go toward, it would go under, and normally an audit falls under the accountant's budget, so mm -hmm. we would need to budget for technically two years for an audit. So the 15000 for the summer for fiscal year 19, and then for fiscal year 20 for the spring of the following year. 
So we'd need thirty thousand dollars. And then what well, we should that probably advise we should probably yeah. take a yeah, we should probably take a vote tonight that we want to hire Tom Scanlon to do the uh, audit. And I'll give you that motion in, yeah. in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the two chunks of fifteen thousand. If there were a look back or a need for a look back, do you want to put a contingency? Of, uh, we could put an additional fifteen thousand. Um, it would also fall under the, the purview of we could be able to be using the reserve fund for that if needed, yeah. because it would be considered an okay. unforeseen expense. Okay. So we could we could use the reserve fund. Okay. So that would be completely up to um, the selectmen and the finance at, when we do the budget. If we want to add an additional 15000 straight to the audit, or if we want to go just with the reserve fund if needed. I, 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 would, I would budget for it, so yes. I, think, I, I think we haven't paid the piper on this for a yeah. while. Okay, We were budgeting even though we weren't conducting audits, and then it just <coughs> however right. that occurred, we quit budgeting for it. Mm -hmm. um, and even just in looking at the notes from you, Sarah, just some of the some of the anomalies found even early on in the scanning and the file organization. I mean, I would suspect that even though your firm has done due diligence in carrying that stuff forward, that we may need another year's worth of of at least a second set of eyes saying, yep, that the way that we handle it is appropriate, and if and at least get a clear indication of whether we need to even go further than that in terms of, of like what level of auditing it is yeah. so right. um, to me it just would make more sense yeah. to to be frank and upfront and say look we might need upwards of the two years let's budget for it if we don't spend it all we can you know, use we it can, as transfer money we can use it as transfer money or turn it back or, or yeah. what have you mm -hmm. so and the other audit might be the following same year as well right so right, and that's true because they might be able to do the second audit in in 2020 in the same fiscal year. Right, which yeah. is what we're planning. Yeah. On. Yes. yeah. So so we would have to budget a minimum of 30. Yes. The, the question is whether 30 will be enough or whether it'll take 45 minutes right. to execute that plan. Yeah. Yeah. So we can probably. And, and where I so back from a motion perspective, mm -hmm. I would motion that we in fact uh, go forward with the scheduling of audits with the Scanlon organization. And that we put aside uh, within the budget of forty-five thousand dollars to have it available, uh, and then I would uh, well, that's the motion. Okay, um, I'll, I'll second, second that. that. I'll second it. And then um, with the, with the notion that we're going to move forward with multiple years, mm -hmm. so that we are, are, we start to catch up. Yeah, we'll get on the schedule. Yes. Now, what this does is it also puts off things for town meeting. So one of the other things as to my interest of what we were doing here is to have or be ready at town meeting for any other changes, financial, organizational changes, whatever, that we need to vote, whether it's money within budgets or whatever, that we are prepared at town meeting to, to I mean, we'll talk about $45,000, that'll be an easy discussion. Uh, well, easy. Should, easy, it's gonna be on the floor. Um, from that perspective, is there anything else that we need to put in front of the voters at town meeting related to the financial organization? Um, we will get you prior to doing the budget um, or during the budget process. We will get a new contract from Pioneer Valley for the accounting services going to the next fiscal year, which yep. should drastically reduce the cost of what you were paying this year because we should no longer be in a cleanup year. Yeah. Um, so you'll be more in an outsourced contract year. Um, other than that, we would just need to decide on a treasurer's budget um, going into next year. Mm -hmm. And we will need to relook at the group insurance, which will be, in my opinion, a substantial increase. I, if I had to guess, mm -hmm. I think we're looking at probably a $50,000 increase um, to what we have been budgeting because it hasn't been properly budgeted over the last two years. So those are going to be, I think, my biggest items of increase to the budget. So just, uh, I see Steve writing, and Jeff, you guys got it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those, those are the same, excuse me, those, I mean, those are the same issues we've been looking yeah. at, trying to figure out how to sort of like fix it, in the, 
So now we know more or less we should be able to make that square more funding. But there are items that can come straight out of the budget. There's consultant lines that can come out. The accountant clerk we will never use. That can come straight out. So there are cost savings in the budget yeah. as well. So it will work. It should, some lines should even themselves out and wash away. Okay. Good. Great. Great. Okay. Fair. Um, so thank you for having me. Um, I've spent a little over 30 days in the office, in the treasurer's office. Um, as I mentioned, the goal was to go in, assess it, see at what point. Can we ever speak up? Sure. I'm sorry. Um, my, I went in there to see how the office was and what you needed to go forward with the cash book because my understanding there was no cash book. Um, when I went into the office, I did find it was. Um, disorganized so the focus had to be on organizing it because otherwise you're just wasting time and money mm -hmm. uh, when you go to reconcile trying to find things and items that's what we've done over the past 30 days um, we have been able to reconcile July 2018 and they we found significant issues with that because the beginning balances were incorrect that were being used um, the bank statement balance were being used the um, outstanding checklist was incorrect. Um, warrants, all the warrants weren't being posted, um, and et cetera. The, but we were able to balance the July statement cash book with accountant. We were hoping to carry the variance forward because, again, we didn't have a clear beginning balance. Um, I did work with the bank a little bit because we need to get a good, clean, outstanding checklist. That's going to affect our variance going through because if I don't have a good check, outstanding checklist, um, you can't really reconcile that account. Yeah. So all the other accounts are being moved forward. We're identifying the um, issues in the outstanding checklist. Uh, some of the big issues I found uh, we're going to struggle with when we hit February, March. Um, as Lori knows, we're, we're coming across these things. And before I spoke with her, when we were scanning and going through, uh, we, we were actually looking at each turnover and, and how they're being applied, whether all the documentation is behind it, including bank statements, uh, where they were posted, and then we compare them to what the account posted. And one of the, the biggest significant issues we're going to run into is that at that point, the um, accountant was changing what the treasurer had posted. and. What that creates is we have the same account, the same ta uh, turnover number, but it's not the same ending amount. So that being said, when we get to March reconciliation, that's going to be a little bit of a struggle, but we've at least identified it. Um, and we're going to move forward when Lori and I get to that stage. We'll work closely to see where we're going to have to pull these apart and what the actual, because um, on the cash book side, we have to go basically what the general ledger says. So I'm going to have to really rip that one apart and come up with a good cash book. Um, to, uh, August we struggled a little bit, but I did talk with Lori today. We identified a few issues. Uh, so hopefully August will be done completely. There was just a couple of issues there, and then I can move into September. Um, let's see. So and, and just to, and just to, and just to clarify, eighteen. 18. So just, and just to clarify and just to, to help people understand in terms of kind of the work that was done to set up to get ready to start the reconciliation versus kind of pace of reconciliation now that it started. Mm -hmm. um, as I review the notes here, it looks like um, July took starting from basically took it looks like about two to three weeks. Is that about so, right? For, and, so, and plus you were trying to get those base, because you had to do the cleanup of the files, right? Yes. You had to get the organization done. Mm -hmm. And then once that was done, and, and even finding a starting balance was problematic. Yes. Right? But within the confines of that, basically at that, at that probably most difficult point, starting point, or at least initially difficult point, starting point, took three weeks to get in essence, July reconciled for all intents and purposes. Yes. Um, so we had many things going on at the same yeah. time. There's a team of four of us that would come in. Okay. And each one of us had a specific job. And 
what one person was doing was, like I said, was looking at each turnover, verifying, because when you have a turnover, you have to have the cover sheet, you have to have each department voucher behind it, and you have to have the deposit slip. Now, all of those together will match. If you don't have that match, then it's, it's not a good turnover. <laughs> so we had one person, yes. I'm sorry, turnover, the, the nomenclature, turnover means to me like the tur a, so you know, basically, something in, in, in and out of so, uh, what a turnover is, is how I look at it and simplify it is somebody's turning money over to me. So a, a department turns money over to me. When they turn over the money on their sheet, it says the amount of money they're handing to me. They sign off on it, then I sign off, yes, it's the same. So it's what generates deposits. It, it does. In, in the simplest terms, it's it's the it's the package of, 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 of checks so and information. For the deposit. Correct, and then that gets entered into the cash book individually, and then that the cash book then ties to the general ledger. So I have to match with the bank first before we move on. Um, so while that person was verifying and looking at these turnovers, uh, we, we created this Excel spreadsheet that when we're reconciling, we can refer to for having issues. So when she was finished with that, um, we had another person entering in um, the bank statement balances, uh, warrants, that were on the um, general ledger side, as well as transfers between bank to bank and also the turnovers. So that was another person. Then the fourth person was scanning everything in. Now scanning is important. Tom Scanlon very much appreciates it. It expedites his job because he has access to all the information. If there's an issue with the turnover, he sees what we have, what the documentation says, versus what's posted in the general ledger, and it's just very transparent, and, it, and it, it smooths everything over. Or if I'm working, and I'm having a question, and I can't seem to find it, everything's right there. Lori has something, she's not waiting an answer for me, I share a file with her, so she has access to all of those, and she can look in. So it's really, um, the first month was really just getting us ready to, yeah. to quickly go on. So Absolutely, <laughs> because what I was trying to point out was that the the August kind of started by the third week that you're here. Correct. Sounds like we're getting close on August. Yes, actually, yeah, we are. Yes, and we actually I plugged in I plugged in the accountant numbers from July through October, so they have them because we're doing a shared cash book, and we are carrying the same variants all the way through the end of August right now. Okay. She has reconciling left to do, but we are carrying the same on beginning balance variance. Okay. So, so the difference is staying the same as we're doing the transaction. Right, yes. That's basically yes. what's, what's going yes. on. Yep. Okay. So now it's the, just that outstanding checklist and a few, you know, deposit and transits <clears throat> that we need to iron out to move forward, and that's what we're, we're identifying. Okay. So it sounds like once we get to February, we, we may have some high entertainment value time spent trying to reconcile. Correct. Um, is there any reason to believe that it's like, like approximately how long is it going to take us to get to February at this point? You think? So I'm estimating uh, about every one week per month. So at, at the end point, of one okay. week, mm -hmm. I should. My goal is to hit one month of reconciliation. Okay. Um, that gives a little bit of wiggle room. Okay. Um, I'm hoping to do a little bit more, but again, when it comes to February and March, that's an average, right. so it might take me three weeks. And I understand that like this work was done over the course of the holidays and with all of the yeah. vacations, vacations and holidays and whatnot. And, and snow and what have you. Right. So now what we're looking at is a week a month. Right. And my yeah. books are done, and I've already gone through February and March, so I should be able to answer any questions. Be able to help her with those questions. Exactly, <laughs> because I had to go through every single one of those turnovers because most of the issues identified was the accountant changing the collector packs. So that's where we're going to see all of the problems, is when the collector turned her packs over, her receipts and turnovers over to the treasurer, then the treasurer turns them over to the accountant, which is the way the VADAR system works, the accountant then was changing dollar amounts and, and for allocations of the reason, dollars, right? I don't know why, but I've already identified all these issues when I went through and finished receivables for fiscal year 19. So hopefully, my notes um, will help Sarah finish and go through her cash for that month. And it's actually reassuring, I have to say, because what we were finding when we were in the office and what we had questions on when I talked to Lori she's on the same page. So we're understanding, and we at least can narrow down where a lot of the issues are. So again, that's reassuring that the two of us are, are under, under the same 
right. idea of what's going on. So you're working under the same yeah. ground rules and assumptions. Mm -hmm. and, and understanding of what's yeah. happening, correct. Okay. So that would put us at, so we're through August, September, October, November, December, January. It's roughly going to be about April, beginning of April, right. so I'm shooting for. Okay. Um, Okay. But at the same time, I'm putting together the balance sheet, and I'm just going to go back and change the round numbers when our cash is done. Right. Because I can do probably 80% of the balance sheet with unfinished cash, and then just go in and change around my cash numbers. I'm going through and changing and <clears throat> verifying deferred revenues and receivables and everything else that needs to be done for the balance sheet. So I should have a balance sheet 80% done, and then as soon as we balance cash together, that would be the end of my balance sheet. So within, I'd say, two weeks of us finishing cash, I should be able to submit the balance sheet. We'll have to go in and do all our gateway forms and everything first, but we should be able to get everything submitted quickly. And we've actually also just, um, when we were here, uh, when Holly was posting, we actually jumped in, looked at November to see, so going forward, that things were being posted accurately. Um, and we just made very minor corrections. Mm -hmm. So uh, we created a little bit different style of turnover, and I hope you, you like it. But what we're doing, instead of having um, multiple turnovers throughout the week, and making it very difficult to decipher what's supposed to be there. Basically what we're doing is we're taking an entire week's worth of packet, and so you're gonna have four, four turnovers, four packets a month, or five is a five week. <laughs> and that way it's easy to identify, and that's really, I think, gonna help streamline and smooth the process going forward in 2020 for reconciliation. Peter, you had a question? What, how much of a variance are you carrying? Um, right now, $321,793.79. So, how does that get resolved? That is, uh, that so, I believe it's the, the issue I, is the beginning balance. It's nothing to be afraid of, it's nothing to be scared of because the beginning balance that was used was a bank balance, which means they didn't take into consideration deposit and transit, which are wires. For instance, this year the state aid didn't hit until July. I don't know if um, that was considered in any of it. Um, also, if there's a Chapter 90 money, if it wasn't posted, it wouldn't. If we got money in July, August, or September, that wouldn't be included in those balances. Um, also, outstanding checklist wasn't there. So, the number is is not a number that we're sure or over three hundred twenty one thousand. It's just our base start. We don't have that, so we have to have a variance going forward. So, I hope that the the goal essentially is to keep that same number as many months as you can until you've identified. Okay, well. I'm, I found that I have another $150,000 of outstanding checks that should have been back in July. So you add that back to July. So realistically, we go as far as we can and then sort of work backwards again when Sarah gets more information. And in the end, my number that I'm using as the beginning number is what we use as our ending number for fiscal year 18, which we were 99% sure of. But that was also going solely on the general ledger, having no fiscal year 18 treasurer's cash. So our number could also be off slightly as well. So as I'm doing, because we only have done a schedule A for fiscal year 18, as I'm doing the fiscal year 19 balance sheet, I'm doing a skeleton fiscal year 18 balance sheet to get the numbers that I need to do fiscal year 19. So that may also show me that I have a variance in fiscal year 18 that I need to post into fiscal year 19. So between the two of us, we may find that we both have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar variance, and that it will just disappear. it will disappear. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't, um, if we, it's still unidentifiable, then when we, the auditor comes in to do an audit, he will suggest doing an audit adjustment um, based on the findings of the treasurer's cash book. But if you're still confident there's no money missing. The general yes. ledger ledger is. You say that the money's there, yes. and it's just trying to uh, reconcile right. the two sides. Yes, I haven't seen anything otherwise. That, that's not the, I haven't seen anything consistent with, with any kind of issues with that. Yes, right. yes, um, I do. Sorry, I'm Jeff Clark. I'm on the advisory board. Steve, the chairman, so I should introduce myself as I haven't mentioned yet. But, Hi, Jeff. Um, just if either Lori or, or someone could back up 
um, as far as the schedule, as far as submitting everything to the state and keeping discussions with the states as far as our, our free cash and getting ourselves okay into the next chapter. Um, how is that coming along? So are, we are still in contact with the state. Um, they know where we stand. We have submitted our fiscal year 18 schedule letter. It has not been approved yet, which is not uncommon for when you submit late. Um, it's not uncommon for a fiscal year 19 Schedule A that was submitted slightly late to not be approved yet. Um, they're busy approving tax rates that were submitted late um, because those are first priority. They are aware of what's going on. They will not withhold state aid um, until we hit like the March threshold. Well, and, of, and that's and that's what yeah. I was going to ask about because oh, you said April, and and I know that that's. As long as we keep in contact, they have said they will not withhold state aid. So we are looking at April to get, hopefully by the end of April, we will have the balance sheet submitted. And then right after that, I will have the schedule A submitted. Okay, and then as far as the budget process, knowing what we have to work with as far as... So free cash, depending on the balance sheet and where the DOR is at that point of reviewing things, usually a pretty quiet time in April um, we should get our balance sheet back fairly quickly um, so a normal balance sheet put back within seven days I'd estimate probably two weeks for a certified free cash um, then we have to use it by June 30th but in, in terms of and I apologize Jeff well, I'm gonna translate a little bit I'm gonna try to translate a little bit and tell me if I get it right besides the free cash piece of the budgeting process I think the fundamental understanding that the advisory board needs is in essence what is our levy that's limit what's that our levy the capacity yeah, all of that's from the tax rate so that that you could provide to them right in now. a simple format yes. right now in order to know what they have for oh, yeah. an operating budget money so so fundamentally where the where the free cash is going to potentially play a much larger role would be on capital. in the capital yes. improvement and and some aspects potentially of the budgeting and in, in, in from the advisory committee on recommending certain articles where what of their opinion of, exactly. of where it ought to come out of but um, I think in terms of operating budget if you could provide those numbers to them so they know what they're dealing with from a standpoint of of you know fundamental levy limit expected free or not expected free cash but expected cherry sheet monies in terms of state aid and um, uh, local receipts, right, and that I have all I have all of that already, right. So, so that so, I already did for the tax rate. So I, I think yes. that's what okay. Jeff's question actually was okay. in terms of town meeting and, and budget process. Gotcha. So, all right. So that in terms of that for budget, I can give you all of that now because I have those numbers available. So quick, so quick, thank you. So yes. now, when should we get together again to check temperatures progress. and, pardon me? Yeah, progress. Yeah, yeah progress. progress. Um, monthly is fine with me. Monthly? I, um, I actually prefer to give you weekly, like I oh, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Please. you know, just okay. to kind of give you what we're doing and where we're at, um, that way you can see any stumbles. Right. So. I'm, I'm thinking more advisory, mm -hmm. CIPC, that we're all kind of on the same page by you providing your report and, and a monthly update. That's it kind of keeps us all on the same page. But, but, but please, if we can continue the weekly temperature checks, those are very useful. Yeah. So how about the second, sure. second fe meeting in February mm -hmm. that we schedule again? Does that work for you guys? It should be fine. And Sarah, are you going to, um, instead of the draft for your um, proposal and stuff, are you going to send me another one? Um, if you have no changes, absolutely. I just wanted you guys to take a look at it, see okay. if there's anything, and then let me know if there's any changes. Okay. Email me back, and then okay, I can I send you. Okay, and if there, we don't have any changes or anything, do I have, the chair has permission to sign the... Has town council reviewed it? No, well, I'm presuming it's your standard contract, but oh, it is. But it's always good to have. Did we have town council approve the other one? First thing, first time we saw it was today for that one. The other yeah. one wasn't really a contract per se. It was it just was like a proposal that you gave correct. us before. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we want town council to review. Uh, I, so long as town council reviews it and doesn't see anything okay. outlandish, I would support you signing. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
So we'll look it over, and if we have any problem, then I'll let you know. And Okay, Sarah. Just while we're out on the budget planning, do we have a timeline? We had talked about having a meeting with department heads and giving out the budget packets, packages. And the, today, capital planning, we, we, um, we're ready to have our forms as part of that packet. Uh, so do we have a do we have a schedule? Do we? So, um, Steve? I'm, so I'm Steve Gillis with the uh, advisor. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the short answer is yes, we're ready to begin. We've been meeting monthly with Lori as far as um, where, where we're at. The, things, the, the, the one thing that we're looking to do and, and uh, we're going to ask the Board of Selectmen tonight is um, and we've all talked about this, is a kickoff event with department heads. And, and a, a, you know, during the day, during the week type of event. And would like your um, suggestion as to what might be the best days to do that. Is, you know, Tuesday's better than Wednesday sort of thing. And then- You want, this, it, this you want to do this during the day. Yes. It will be during the day. It will, it will be a required meeting with department heads. Uh, our committee will be in attendance, or at least those who can attend, and then whoever else you are requiring from your staff to be there. But uh, we think this is an opportunity to sort of like turn a new leaf. Just here's the budget process, here's the expectations, here's the information you need, um, uh, here's the schedule that we're after, um, that sort of thing. So we have these templates that we're going to throw, you know, pro propose to everyone. And, uh, uh, it, I'm sure we'll have another uh, level fund uh, party uh, like we did last year. Um, okay, I'll like I'll have Karen send out um, a note to all the different department heads and find out you know what is uh, basically a good day for them to come in during the day, and then um, we'll get you back have no to. No sense for what that might be because we're meeting Thursday night, this coming Thursday yeah. night, and we we want to be able to turn around and say, well, Here's what what, we're what day would be good for you then? Um, Probably Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. That's so when you like usually that. met anyway. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Because I usually have a financial meeting every third Tuesday yeah. with the finance people. So probably we could do it on, on Tuesday. Probably a day that we don't have a meeting. It would a be an Tuesday, off night. A Tuesday, yeah. a morning, a and morning. something like that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Fine. Excellent. That's what we need. Uh, and okay. then Peter, answer your question directly. <laughs> um, yeah. At that point, we'll have sort of a... A date After now? Thursday, we'll have sort of a schedule of how we see this wrong we, board. Okay. And, we, and um, we'll be discussing. We want to try uh, to pick a date that's not, if we don't have a meeting at night. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay, Steve, we're going to get, we're going to look now and we're going to pick a so date. So that, that's your third the, Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, that's when I have my financial. That would be next what, week. Yeah, why don't you put it right on top of it? You want to do that? Yeah. Give me, okay. Yeah, sooner the better. Steve, could you be ready for the 21st? Yeah, because that's my next financial meeting. Um, well, why don't we... I'm, I'm, Ten, yes. Tentatively okay. the 21st. Tentatively? We say the 21st and the 28th, and we're going to shoot for the 21st. Yep. Okay. okay. Okay, so we'll get a notice out tomorrow to all the department heads and tell them that it's... Oh, what do you want, 10 o'clock? Is that fine? Um, excuse me. I personally will not be there on the 21st, so oh. maybe that's not... A good day. It's not a good day. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm traveling okay. next week on bids. So okay, well, how 28. about the 28th? How about 28th? 28th would be great. Is Lord, that it gives you time? Oh, yeah. Okay, Fair, yeah. Right? okay. the 28th. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. so I'll have, I'll same. have Karen get out a notice to everyone and we'll do it at 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. on Thursday, Tuesday, Tuesday the 28th. 28th. Okay, all department heads, and do we want to put that? It will be ma a mandatory meeting. Yes. Uh, I did have one piece of feedback about the draft contract. Yeah. You did? Yeah, the committee has two one left. Well, uh, the committee's we have a bunch of plans for two mm -hmm. years, so I think we have a lot of the stuff already yeah. prepared. All the different committees, too. The numbers and, and figure out how, what the best way to mm -hmm. present and, and then get a little education uh, also mm -hmm. as far as how so it works. Okay, I know. And it, yeah. So, yeah, we'll have to get all the committees, the department heads of the different committees in here, too, that had the budget. Right. Yeah. So, and it would be a, maybe one hour, more like 45 minutes. Okay. It would be a, uh, an explanation of um, 
where we are, with the, the process, okay. and our our thoughts on how we would target mm -hmm. heads individually. Okay. All that, right. I mean, that's sort of it. Questions, okay. and then. And the memo is, everything's already prepared. Everything is very spelled out on how the process works, what's required of them, what needs to be filled mm -hmm. out. They have their budget numbers, spent numbers for the last two years, and then what needs to be filled out for this year and what we'd expect yeah. them to do for payroll and expenditures, and if there's new lines that are gonna be required for them to be filled in for new account numbers, okay. such as highway for snow and ice needs to be broken payroll versus wa um, wages versus expenses. So there's justification areas for something that's not gonna be level funded. So everything should be okay. pretty clear for everybody. Okay. Excellent. That's good. Okay. Yeah, Beth had something. Well, uh, I, yeah. I won't be there, but we'll still have like yeah. capital okay. So we're way over on our hearing with, with Mr. Lowe over here. I so, apologize. I just have hmm? two really quick two points will, on the okay, contract. Two. Uh, uh, two really okay. quick points on the contracts. Sir, there's, there's two things that I would ask, though, that you take a look at in your draft, if you don't mind. Um, the, a number 10 certification by the consultant. Um, it is a, a statement that says warrants the truth and accuracy of the following documents, and then there's no indication of which documents those are. Okay. So if we could delineate what those documents are. Uh, it'll have them attached when it's a final. It's, it's okay, great. Um, <laughs> Right. Yeah, well, okay, and then, and then the, the other piece is, is, and I'm not expecting this to be an issue, but the great thing about contracts is it avoids misunderstandings in the event that there's an issue, is that um, there's the general provisions and it talks about termination or suspension. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to see some sort of like 5.1.4 that says in the event of suspension or termination uh, by either party that the consultant shall perform a thorough joint review of the resulting work product at the time of the suspension. Okay. That, that would be the, the one thing that I would like to okay. see in addition to what's currently in the contract. So, so I asked that the last time. Yes. If you could you know, write something down and present it as you're leaving. So, <laughs> so yes. Sarah, you could get that changed to me and then I will get it to um, town council and have, have them look it over. Okay, um, that won't be till Thursday or Friday because the next Oh, that's okay. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Great. Okay. Thank okay. you. So, thank both of you for coming in and, you. and the work that you've, us. the progress that you've made so far is yeah. really appreciated. You've gone above and beyond, I think, the both of you. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Andrew. Andrew. Okay. This is good. This, that's got the original bills that have to be submitted. Yeah, that's what. No, no, but the bill. I'll talk to you after. Okay, now we have our. Okay. Have a hearing with us. I'm not sure if you want to. What do we want? Oh, we we'll just give the gist of it. Okay, I have something here. Okay. All right, we're late on our hearing. So it was supposed to be at 6.45. Uh, we'll conduct a public hearing uh, on in the banquet hall, and it's to it's to review uh, the status. Mics for the camera. There are no speakers. Come on up front. Okay. We can't hear anyone. Yeah. Well, then let's move the chairs closer. Sure. <laughs> or speak up on the on Okay, this. all right. Tonight, what we're going to do on the C CBD grant is uh, they're going to be statuses of projects that are funded through FY28 Community Development Block Grant and an $800,000 reward, including public infrastructure improvements of Hayden and Hyde, and two, the housing rehabilitation program and options of roughly 30000 in unexpected grants that will be discussed. So I'll just give you that, and then we'll let Andrew take over. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. Um, again, um, so just for folks who are here, there's a handout up front here that uh, <clears throat> I'll be referring to uh, as I talk about this. So again, this is uh, the Town of Brookfield's FY 2018 Community Development Block Grant Performance Hearing. So this is a hearing that's a required element of any community development block grant. Um, each grant has two required hearings, one during the application process and one toward the end of the grant period. 
Uh, and the purpose of this is to give a, a brief update of what's been funded through the grant and uh, to give folks a chance to ask questions uh, and, and learn about what's been happening. So um, this is a grant uh, that was made um, from Federal Housing and Urban Development through Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development for $800,000 to the town of Brookfield. Um, and uh, there were two activities funded through this grant. The, uh, first and, and larger one was the Hayden and Hyde Improvement Project. So this was the construction phase of a project that had been on the town's radar for a number of years and was designed in the previous CDBG grant that the town had. So uh, this was uh, primarily on the two named streets. So Hayden Avenue and Hyde Street was also on a port from Kimball Street. Um, included a uh, replacement water main on Hyde Street, a new drainage on Hayden Avenue, uh, sidewalks and paving on both streets. And as the project was going, it became apparent that it was coming in under budget. So uh, we were able to do some additional sidewalk on, and paving work on a, a piece of Kimball Street that wasn't originally um, in the project scope. So construction began last July and it was completed by last October. The final budget, inclusive of both the construction and the construction phase engineering, was about $466,000. The Housing Rehab Program. So this is a program that uh, many of you will be familiar with. Um, this is, a, it's technically a loan program, but it's a, a depreciated loan to income eligible uh, folks within town. So um, it's a 15 year loan and at the end of the loan period. If people haven't sold their home, then it, it, the loan goes away and they haven't made any payments during the period of the loan. So um, eligible activities under this program are things like roof repairs, window replacements, septic system um, replacements. You can connect to the sewer. I, 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 you don't have sewer here, so I should remove that from my handout. But um, so other rehab work, it could be you know boiler, uh, almost any kind of home rehab work for income qualifying residents. Um, and so this one, um, we budgeted for six units of, of rehab in this year's grant and at this point that there's been a, a little update since this hand, this handout was developed for the original hearing date which is last month snowed out so all six of those units are now in process so um, three of them are complete two of them are fully complete one is substantially complete another one is at 50 percent there's one that is starting up uh, in the past few weeks and there there's one that's income qualified and is going out to bid in the next couple of weeks so um, Right now, 138,000 of the 141,000 in the program is allocated, depending on where um, the final budgets come in for the ongoing projects. There may be an opportunity to squeeze in a, a seventh project. It would have to be a small one, most likely an emergency project where we just address whatever the emergency condition is, rather than doing a comprehensive rehab. Um, I should say also, this program is overseen by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, they have a full housing team of about six uh, full-time housing folks, and we partner with them for purposes of doing this kind of activity under these grants. So those are the two um, activities in this grant. And I think um, I'd like to get to the discussion of the unexpected funds next. Uh, mm -hmm. Normally that would be a separate hearing. The, the state allowed me to combine them just because uh, they were going to happen on the same yeah, day anyway. That's fine. Um, so if folks have questions about the, either the Hayden and Hyde Improvement Project or the Housing Rehab Program. Uh, I'd like to take those now. Pardon? What went in last week? Someone I know put in a letter for a septic system on Hyde Street. Is that part of this? I would have to check to see if that particular person was, was well, in the firm. Most of her life pays taxes and she's very elderly with no extra. And she really needs to have a septic system or a roof or both. Yeah, I would have to know her name and check back in the database to see if she's one well, of the so six projects. Well, it was just in the paper. Yes. And then she immediately. Okay, so I think what you're referring to, my colleague Ian, who uh, couldn't be here tonight, he um, he's working with the town to try to put together an FY20 application for more housing rehab funds. Um, at this point, we're not sure if the town will be eligible to apply for FY20 because you still have this open FY18 grant with a little bit of money left in it. But in any case, um, I, I believe the CDBG I don't committee. I think she knew about this. Okay. Well, we, we have tried to do outreach, but 
you know, it, it's about making our choices within the budget limit of each yeah. grant. No, so great. this particular grant, the bulk of it, it came from, uh, went to the Hayden and Hyde project. So the housing rehab program was relatively small. Uh, there, you know, well, some years the housing rehab the program is bigger than the other activities. They did a super job on the street. Yeah, I think it came out, uh, it looks nice over there when it's not uh, covered in snow. So. Um, okay. But if you want to, uh, I think you have all my contact information. If you'd like to follow up on on the person who you know, I'd be happy to talk about that and see where she is. <coughs> and like I said, we're we're making an effort to try to get more funding for that oh, program. Can we discuss this afternoon communication. Yes. I'm not top grade. Well, we we try. So, uh, not you, all of us. Any other keep keep moving, before? Andrew. Yeah, keep yeah, moving. Keep okay. Moving. So unexpected funds, uh, unexpected funds, also unexpected. Um, so, uh, because the Hayden and High project has come in somewhat under budget, there's about twenty-eight thousand dollars in the new grant. Um, and uh, generally speaking, in CDBG, if you have time left in your grant and you have money left, they will let you transfer money into either you know from one activity to another or to a new eligible activity. <clears throat> and uh, the CDBG advisory committee has met in the last month to, to talk a little bit about some potential activities that could benefit from this uh, money that, that's left over. So uh, one idea was to do some additional planning, design, or construction of infrastructure improvements, especially in the neighborhoods near the town center where the infrastructure is the oldest. Uh, and one item that's popped up uh, uh, on that front would be Green Street, which was identified as an area with major drainage issues. Uh, another idea would be to add on to the existing housing rehab program. Um, and the third one would be to try to do some remediation of environmental conditions uh, at the 15 Post Road site, which was uh, examined under the FY17 grant. Um, and just going through those, so that Green Street, uh, the CDBG committee um, decided to prioritize that if possible. Mm -hmm. So the, the trick with that one is that we have to uh, finalize an income survey that was started there a couple of years ago to make sure it's eligible. Assuming we can do that, we only need two or three responses to, to to get to where we need to on that. Um, then we would uh, help the town go ahead and get an engineer to do a design. The idea there is that you could then apply in the next year or two to do construction of the improvements. Um, second one was housing rehab. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. You could probably do one more unit. I was going to say, I did the math and it looked like it was one more unit. Yeah, and I should also say, you know, when you look at $28,000, uh, it costs a few dollars <coughs> for Pioneer Valley to, to income qualify and, and Put together the specs and all that stuff for each unit. So, you could, uh, like I said, I think one unit would be doable for housing rehab additionally. And then we did look at doing some of the remediation at, uh, at the 15 post road site, but I spoke to the engineer who had done the study uh, in FY17 there, and this amount of money isn't going to get you very far, far enough to be meaningful. Uh, so, again, the CDBG committee has decided to look at Green Street because it kind of primes the pump for future uh, capital grant um, there. Um, and this decision doesn't have to be made today, um, but we, the hearing does have to you know, be a public forum so that people can, can uh, ask questions or, or hear about this. Do we have any more questions on any of that? Good plan. Good plan. Yeah. Just a couple quick questions. Sure. Um, so you alluded to with having the unexpended funds, it could potentially get in the way of a 2020 application? Well, uh, so the, that's on, yes. Long story short, yes. You're, you have to be 80% expended to reapply uh, in not the subsequent round, in the round okay. after that. Oh, but so. aren't we awfully close to 80% expended because it was, if we only have $28,000 left from the Hayden Hyde section of it and we it sounds like we've identified projects for all of the 141,000 for the housing doesn't that put us at 80 well, percent expanded in CDBG land means that you know the work has been done the work has been invoiced the invoice has been claimed to the state to draw funds out of the grant the okay. claim has been approved the funds have come to the town and the check has been spent by the vendor so it tends to lag uh, anywhere up to three months so it's uh, 
you know, it, it's a coin flip at this point as to whether or not you're going to be able to apply in 2020. Um, so, because it, it's housing rehab. What you see here, as I mentioned, 138,000 out of 141 is allocated, but a lot of that work is ongoing. And even some of the work that's been done, we haven't gotten invoices for yet from the contractors. So I, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's, it's below half of that number that's actually been um, invoiced at this point. So we're, we're pushing at the contractors to do invoices, but it, uh, you know, they, they often operate on their own schedule. So. Okay. Okay. Any, any more questions? Oh. Well, we are applying through North Brookville, for example, uh, in one Well, that, that partnership is, is, as soon as we can determine that you're eligible, yes, you will be part of that application, but that's with the caveat that you're, you're at your 80% um, spent. Spent. Now, as we get closer, you know, we'll we'll know a lot more as soon as we get all the December invoices in from everyone. There could be the opportunity uh, to either request a waiver saying that there was some unforeseen uh, thing that came up. I, you know, I don't think we can say that about housing rehab because we knew mm -hmm. what the project was there. We could say that oh, this Hayden Hyde has come in under budget, um, and that's one rationale for it. Um, you could also send back some money so that you can you know, essentially forego money that's in your existing grant in order to reapply. But the CDBG committee, you know, knowing that these are competitive grants, you know, it's it, you have to make a choice. Is it, is it better to keep this money that you know you have so you can do the design at Green Street and then go after a capital Wait, project yeah, next yeah. year, or is it better to forego some of that money so that you can? What's the what is the deadline to get the last? Dollars well, spent before we can you have to have it spent by March 6, which is the deadline. But in practice, it's a little before that because you know, at the Planning Commission, we've been able to help develop future housing rehab um, in tandem with North Brookfield uh, because we know even if folks say they have a need now, they'll probably have the same need next year. And so, if it's an FY21 application, you know, we can kind of kill two birds with one stone there. So not, um, to, not to play dev devil's advocate but what's what would be the lead time of an additional of the green street engineering design versus the housing rehabilitation and what are we more likely to potentially um, meet neither that? one's going to be done an invoice by, by march no. it's not going to make a difference okay. and there are people on the housing rehab wait list but it's it takes several weeks to get people to um, complete all the income qualification stuff and you have to fit it out and get a contractor on board and, and like I say, even once they do the work, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't always get invoiced promptly. Uh, uh, just a, so the total rent was for 800000 Yes. So the two projects, it looks like it came in just over 600000 Yeah, what you're not seeing here is the uh, Pioneer Valley's cost for doing yeah, all the that's right. stuff. I, I and see CRPC's cost for yeah. getting Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Do I remember, I and mean, you've already talked about this, and so I'm sorry, uh, but the state wouldn't approve Green Street's drainage plan. Has that been resolved? The uh -huh. state, they didn't, wouldn't let us feed the drainage into the, the state's system? Oh, I, you may be referring to um, at High Street, uh, Draper and High Street. Okay. That was an issue there where Yes, there, there was a design completed under the FY17 program where we had asked the state uh, if the town's drainage could feed directly into the state's drainage of Route 9. Yeah. And they, they told us we were going to have to do a $50,000 alternatives analysis to, to yeah. get to that point, and uh, there was no money. And that to do that. did not apply to Green Street? Uh, Green Street, I, I don't think the drainage there connects to any state route. Um, I could be wrong, but it's... Uh, the, well, I think that the main issue that they would be looking at there, though, would be the upstream end, where it comes in from Grove, I believe. Right. Um, and there's a kind of a mess at that corner there, where there was probably once a brook that uh, okay. goes through Ken, well, you and I walk on the street in between the houses, the backs. Yeah. You know, putting a septic, uh, a drain line down the back. It's, it's got no place to go. Yeah. It has to go one over one forty eight and. The state considers that country drainage. Well, there, there's basically a ditch there, right? So I don't know. I think the water, that's where it goes, right? Uh, yeah, it's more than Green Street. And there's two, two other properties and then across. 
Fading the plan, which there's been some rumbling and noise all of a sudden because somebody must be phoning them what's going on and they never said anything before. Uh, but there's a lot of water coming where you and I went. Yeah. And uh, what are we doing? Wait. Well, I mean, it, that, we should talk about that. I mean, if, that's, if there's nowhere to put that water except in the state's drainage main, then we need to know that now. Um, and Green Street's always been a problem area for years. Yeah, for years. Probably it's an area that was once a wetland, and mm. in modern times we wouldn't, yeah. you know, encourage mm -hmm. people to develop there. But it's, it's, right. you know, most of our towns are yeah. built where they used to be. So you get some work to do, Andrew. Yes, we have many yeah. things. To do. So. All right. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> Anything else that you want to say, or uh, anybody from the audience? Are we all set? Okay. We'll close okay. the hearing. We'll second. Yeah. Okay. We'll close the hearing at. I, that's what time we got. It's seven thirty-seven. It's seven thirty-one. Oh, seven thirty-one. Oh, I thought. Okay. Vote we'll to close the meeting. Yep. You have a motion to oh. that effect. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Andrew. Okay. Thank you, thank you Andrew. And now we're gonna after Andrew leaves, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna approve the wire. Yeah, we're going to approve the wire inspection revolving account for the uh, annual town meeting of discussion. So, Scott, would you like to come up? And Laurie, were you going to just um, explain it's some your of recommendation. that too? Yeah. So, I, I'll give you yeah. a motion to yeah. approve the wire inspector revolving account for annual town meeting. I can second that. And we'll have some discussion on it. Yep. So. Okay. Go ahead, Scott. So um, what I was looking for was <clears throat> basically we set up a, a new fee structure so that when we have large scale projects come into town, the townspeople don't pay for the additional time and cost of inspections. So when we were looking at something like a solar field, the average solar field is between five and six megawatts. My time uh, pre-design inspections for underground, final inspections, floor ratings, on a, on a scale that size is up in over hundreds of hours to, of inspection time. So instead of the townspeople paying for that, we established a new and set up a new approval for additional fees for that contractor to pay that time. So the townspeople don't have to pay. So right now you guys pay me a salary and that's for every town's person to do inspections on our house, to do, you know, it's mm -hmm. yeah. town hall stuff. So, Basically, all we need to do is have the revolving account so that when we charge them X amount, it's two dollars and fifty cents per KW. Um, we take then that money that we do for a permit fee, and it it gets split eighty twenty. So the inspector, whoever it may be at the time, gets eighty percent of that fee, and then the town gets the additional twenty percent, and it goes back into um, a revolving account, and at the end of the year, it goes into the town. So it's actually going to make us money instead of uh, costing money and, and taking my time away from the townspeople and the monies that you guys already put in the park. So that's all we were doing. We're just looking to, um, to start the revolving account so we could do that. And you have a recommendation yep. from the accountant. Yep. So we set up the revolving account. Um, revolving accounts have to be authorized at town meeting and established mm -hmm. at town meeting. We did set this one up early. Um, the Department of Revenue does allow revolving accounts to be set up prior to town meeting as long as there is an article um, calling it out as a prior year. So we call it as a fiscal year 20 um, article establishing the wire inspector revolving fund. Um, so just as Scott said, all of the fees he collects will be turned over to the treasurer. I will then pay him his 80% out. 20% will remain in this separate fund. And then when we establish the fund at town meeting, we will at that time determine, well, we'll determine prior to town meeting, what we would like to do with the remaining 20%. Um, typically, um, options are that are done in towns is the 20% remains in the revolving account. Um, when it builds up to a substantial amount, um, we can either remove um, the budgetary account for the wire inspector and they spend out of that account instead. Um, or the second option is that you have what is called a revolving dump at the end of the year. 
So at the close of the fiscal year, everything that is remaining in that revolving account would just close to the general fund. So every year at the beginning of the fiscal year, you start with zero. Um, you, I ensure that the 80% has been paid to the inspector, that all that remains is 20%, and that you just close out to zero. Um, so that's something that we would put right into the article when we establish the fund. So who's doing the article? Uh, I have an article already written that I've used in other towns that the Attorney General has approved previously. Okay. okay. So. And so that between you and the advisory board, you'll determine what would be recommended to this board as far as the dis delusion yeah. of the remaining mm -hmm. funds? My personal recommendation is that we just drop it to the general fund at the end of every year. Uh, it's a little bit cleaner. Um, the problem with using it towards the wire inspector's expense budget is if there's a year where there's no inspections and th then there's no expense money. Yeah. Right, um, okay. Unless there's been like a huge bulk from the year before. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just creates unnecessary stress on the operating budget. Um, the other towns I work for do just that. It goes into the, the dump yeah. fund and it gets mediated through the That would That would seem cleaner. It, yeah. it is yes, much it cleaner. Is. It just closes to the general fund every year. We do have some towns, though, that do that a pretty set schedule if they do a lot of solar inspections. So they do just keep that money, and that's how they operate. So I'd look to amend my motion to mm -hmm. any residual funds be moved to the general fund? Yes, at the end of every fiscal year. So one, we'll, we'll look to approve the wire inspection revolving account fund with the, with the specification yeah. that it goes, any monies left over go to the general fund. Okay. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, Peter, did you have something? Well, I was just thinking, with this, if normally there's going to be a, a big balance whenever there's a big project, right? But not usually. Correct. This is going to be based off of any project that's going to be controlled, construction, engineered. Right. So anything 5,000 square feet or more. So the Cumberland Farms that went in a few years ago would fall under that, that position because it's based on the structure and uh, the tanks around it. Uh, so the town of Brookfield isn't going to have that many. Uh, we are looking at probably three solar fields coming up in the near future. Uh, one of them is going to be very large if it goes through and everything starts, uh, which is the biggest one that I see. Um, it's a nine megawatt system, so that is very large, and um, um, it's going to be very time consuming. And then there's also a couple smaller ones that are in the works now. So in the next year, we're looking at three major projects. My, my uh, ulterior motive was thinking of it as one-time revenues, which we accept in our policies, should be thought of as putting into a capital reserve. Uh, you cannot do that. You can't do it directly. No. So you could do it through a transfer from free cash or some other way uh, after. That, that dump is going to show up in free cash. It would show up as somewhere along the line as free cash. You would never know what that right. dollar amount would be. Right. transferred to become free cash though. But it would be sort of a windfall in a way. And, mm -hmm. and we wouldn't want to just let it right. support the operating budget. Uh, you know, we ought to try to pull it out for some of our capital needs. Well, so it, at some it, point. it would just close to the general fund, so it would just be considered unexpended right. um, funds at the end of every year. So it would go into that pool that would accumulate and generate the free cash number. Ken, did you have a question? Um, solar farms, the one that's about to happen maybe on Cornyn Road? Yes. It's Brookfield, West Brookfield. Yeah, they interested in one farm. Yes. I talked to the National Grid and they asked us if, if it would be okay if they, because the grid is full. I guess everything is on hold. Is a delay, yes. Uh, and they were going to have to put a substation somewhere they're looking to put a substation in in brookfield yep in or well in that area we don't know where yet well that's what he asked me i said oh yeah we're in brookfield we, we, we love that in brookfield but uh, yeah that makes it more complex because this particular field is basically in three different towns yeah um and after speaking with two of the towns that are involved because one is only a driveway cut in, but then the physical thing, the physical field is split between half and half to other towns. So they're going to have the same permit fees based off of each town, and it's logistical. 
nightmare, but National Grid is got, they do have everything on hold right now. The town of Warren is doing a large field now. The field is 100% complete with no power to it. There's like a three month delay with National Grid while they build their infrastructure to support it. Uh, those three months delays are now gonna turn to six months, which can turn to eight months. But the developers are still gonna build knowing that. Sorry, I actually am a developer. Uh, the Eight Digital Road project I just wanted to shed some light on the National Grid situation, which might help your planning in the future. Phase one of their statewide study is complete, so if your project was in that, you've been given the go-ahead to interconnect. Um, with specifically this area, they're uh, going to increase the Lashway substation, probably by two transformers, and look for a new build completely. Where? I'm Stop. not national grid, I can't tell you, but <laughs> just to give you a little bit of background. Good. Yeah. That's very, that's very similar to what I was told. Yeah. Excuse me, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, please? I'm so sorry. I'm uh, Sarah Rosenblatt, uh, development manager for Swap Development. Oh, okay. Nice. You're good? Okay. Thank you, everybody. That's good. That's good. Okay. So, and so um, we need to vote. I think we need to vote. Hmm? I amended my motion. Right. You amended it, and I seconded it. Right. So we just need to vote. Yeah, we're just all yeah. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Scott, you're all done. You're all Thank set. You. Thank you. Everybody. You're welcome. Appreciate the input. Oh, she's number I don't know. Do we want to? Oh, yeah. yeah we're we're gonna... Gonna... Why don't we move her up? Yes. I didn't realize she what was out she, there. What did she have her first name? I, would you like to? Well, we can. Yeah, you're on us, number 11. And so we're going to take this you. This is Rosenblatt. I don't know what first name. We're going to take you out of order. Sure. Sure. Okay, let hey me Hey, guys. Go. Guys, we don't want to be here till midnight. And we're on a crack of being here till midnight. Yeah. Okay, resignation. Thank let you, me Jeff. see. Appointment. So what we're going to do is motion to move number 11 uh, out of out of order. Any voices? To catch no. Oh, here's the that. solar. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do that. We're doing number 11. It's a solar contract, and we're discussing the parent guarantee and the commissioning bond. Great. Yeah. So just to be clear, it's actually the decommissioning bond, and uh, right. the um, value is for 200,000. It has been approved by both the planning board, and as well on uh, May 7th, 2019, we brought the uh, decommissioning bond uh, letter to this board. Uh, it was approved and signed off on. There were four uh, different methods of posting the bond: uh, surety bond, payment letter of credit. Um, cash deposit and parent guarantee. So we are hoping to move into construction in April of this year. As such, we need to post our bond prior to commencement of construction. And so right now we are going with the parent guarantee route. In the letter that was noted, um, we had suggested either our German entity or our US entity. To us, it makes no difference who posts this. Uh, parent guarantee. It is really up to the select board. Okay. So, the, so the real question is back to from a legality perspective. If there were any legal actions, one way or the other, it's U.S. law. Yes. yes. Everything here is the state of so, math governing law is the state of math. Okay. Right. So we don't. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter as long as it goes along with Massachusetts law. Yeah. So what now, do you need from now, us? now, what is the reason that you would that your preference is to is using your German name? We have more assets and a larger cash flow, which makes it easier for us to hold the parent guarantee for such a long period of time. Um, that's really the only reason okay, why. So, we would so fundamentally, you're in a better cash position with your German entity in Correct. order to properly fund the bond. Correct. As long as we're using U.S. law. Yes, we, have to, we have to use Massachusetts state law for the decommission bond to hold within the state's eyes. We, we must. Yep. Okay. Now, so, do, do we need a motion? Yeah, some interesting non-verbal story. Did you have an opinion? Okay. So, do we need a motion to that, okay. that effect? Yeah, I'll make a motion to ex uh, accept their German entity as a, as a legitimate entity for the purposes of the parent guarantee on the decommissioning bond. Second. Second. Any more discussion on that by anyone? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Yes, Ken. Uh, no, I'm not on the subject, but at Hayfield Farm, I mentioned about the company from Canada that's supporting that. Said, at first, the conservation said, no, okay. Is that 
sense you can get from the end of the We started our own recycling business. So none of that stuff is going to go in town or anybody else's transfer stations. They uh, already recouped from like six or seven tons of the mains up to the Amtrak's recycle system, which made everybody happy. So, like I said, we told them no at first, but now it's ready to go. That's a 25 acre big project. Good. And I think we've already got that. All right, moving on. Go moving on. It, we're going to ratify class two and ratify common victims licenses. Okay. And that's because the meeting was yeah. canceled because of the snow. That's why the was it was in the end. So, motion to sign. Okay, motion to sign. You want to sign and we just Yeah, we, to we just have to ratify. Motion to ratify. Second. All in favor? Aye. Quicker than I thought. That's good. Okay, that one. Okay, now we have some of our special permits here for the boating, and I'll, I'll, do, I'll do them all at one time. Yep. Uh, we have an event on 4-25-2020 at Quaybog Pond. It's the New England Basin. And then we have, uh, is this the same one? I think it's the second page, yeah. Yeah, the second page. Yep. All right. And, and now we have another event on 6-13-2020. And that's Quaybog Pond, and that's the Bass Nation. And then also another one for 7 4 2020 at South Pond. It's the Quaybog Quasamance Lake Association. And this is 9 12 2020 from Quaybog Pond for the Quaybog Quambasas. I <laughs> say that? What? You know what I mean. Come Lake Association. Yes. Okay. Okay, and so like a motion to uh, motion to sign second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next one are some uh, wage authorizations. Okay. This one um, we can vote them all at once. This one is for Alex Westerback. That one came in late, so that one wasn't signed by the personnel board. But I thought because it came in before tonight that we ask you guys if you want to sign it, unless you want to hold off. The um, yeah. I mean, we have said before that we want to avoid signing at the selectmen okay. until it's been reviewed I just by put it the in personnel there committee. I know Peter put it in, okay. and we're we're sign. meeting with the middle next month, so we want to hold this one back. Is fire? Yeah, it's for the fire. Oh, okay. Hmm? Hold on. We're going to hold off? Is that what you're saying? They've been fire, fire just was paid. They're already paid once a month. Yeah. So they won't hit the next cycle. Okay. Yeah. So this just bring him up to minimum wage. Okay, so we'll wait down. Oh, it's just minimum wage? Yeah, to bring him up to minimum wage. Let's just put it in the book. Okay. Okay, it's just to bring him up to minimum wage, which is 1275 Yep. Okay, now we had another one. We approved of this. And I think we had talked about this at a meeting. Um, Holly Chisholm, who is our assistant treasurer, has been, uh, she's actually been doing the treasurer's job. And uh, we talked, she put in one for uh, what the present, what the, uh, the um, interim before her was getting was 2665. And we had voted on that. But we said that would be if there's money in the budget for her to do that. Is there money in the budget? It depends on how you look at it, I guess. So there, one way to say, yes, there's money in the budget for Holly, or there's money in the budget for Sarah's consultant. In the end, there's going to be a deficit in the treasurer's account as a whole. Whether or not we provide Holly with this increase, there will still be a deficit in this account. Steve. We will be looking at transfers from other funds come May 15th. Um, I think I should be able to cover all the deficits. I ran the accountant's budget really quickly and I shouldn't need the entire reserve fund to cover the remaining accounts. So I should be able to cover most of the treasurers from there as well as a few other accounts that I've pegged for, um, for transfers. Steve had a point. Yes. So Holly is 
not the interim treasurer. Correct? No, I didn't say she was. I said she is asking for what the interim treasurer was getting. She is the assistant treasurer, but she has been doing the full treasurer's job. And she's been, she just left here a little while ago. She's been putting in a lot of extra hours. I, I understand. Um, I, I would strongly recommend against paying her at the interim treasurer's level. And um, if there's a method for her to apply for um, overtime or something like that, perfectly fine. But um, it, it, she, we've gotten in this pattern of paying people at higher levels, and it, I just don't think it's, it, I don't think it's smart at all. She's the assistant treasurer, and I would keep her right there, period. Well, well, on, and here's the thing, though. I mean, what we had talked about at one of the previous meetings. Yes which is rather than making a permanent pay adjustment was to go ahead and try to calculate what an appropriate uh, during the period of time where she is in essence working above her pay grade okay which she is currently she so is. so I understand your concern about like a permanent change in wages associated that would normally be associated with the change in position okay uh, the flip side of it is when we ask people to work above their grade Right, um, there's there's some precedence in this town, like like in the police mm -hmm. contract. If somebody is acting chief, they get a, a daily stipend for their acting chief duties. Um, I think we did some sort of a, a some nominal compensation in the highway department mm -hmm. while we were between superintendents yeah. for for some mm -hmm. of the hourly associates who were down there. Okay, um, I don't know if going fully to the previous interim treasurer's rate is appropriate okay but i think some fairly sub substantive uh financial acknowledgement of the extra work that she's doing predicated on during that period of time where she is for all intents and purposes acting treasurer would be in order so would we and know. is that what that reflects? Yeah, and, and I guess and I guess the question That's would be, and I and I think the the question is, is 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 that what we're talking about? And and is there a way for us to, in essence, instead of changing her hourly rate, come up, pay her the delta in that hourly rate as a as a, at, on like a bonus line or some other line within that budget, so that it's clear that. If she doesn't stay permanently in that role, that that wage rate does not stay past mm -hmm. the period of time where she's in essence the acting treasurer. So realistically, um, and I don't know what is in your bylaws or if you have a bylaw or anything that says something like this to your personnel board, you could vote to increase her salary solely while she is performing the duties of the interim or the treasurer only during that period of time. And when she goes back to being the assistant treasurer, her pay rate will decrease to back to what it currently is. Um, or you could do something in terms of offering a weekly stipend to the tune of whatever you find to be appropriate, whether you took the whatever the $2 or so an hour increase times however many hours a week she's working at the treasurer's office and offer her a flat of one hundred dollars. I'm just rounding. One hundred dollars a week stipend. Um, if everything goes to payroll, um, you just need to put it in writing, so that way it is. It's easy enough to change in our payroll system that you can offer a stipend that will go in weekly, or you could just change your pay rate on the treasurer's side only while she's working that particular job. Because I do also agree that changing a permanent rate. When you in the position that when you look for a full-time replacement, yeah. you are now looking at a $35 an hour treasurer, right. because your clerk or assistant is now making $26.65 if she chooses not to apply for that position. Right. Um, so, puts so, you behind the game. so what did that? What what does that translate to? Is that like, like uh, what's her base? I don't her, see her previous salary on there. I think which is she a, isn't it 24? 24 something. 24 something. Yes. And the, the personnel board, we had approved of it last week, like we said, if the money was in the budget. So we know how to cover the yeah. difference. The, mm -hmm. the question is that we're talking not 35, but we're talking 26,000. 26. 
So it's really, it doesn't go to where Steve, Steve's concern of 35. Yeah. It's not 35, Steve, no, it's, it's 26. Not. It's 26. Versus 24. Mm -hmm. So we're talking two grand, rough numbers. Yeah, we we're two. talking in a year, $2,000. We only have about six months left of this year. So we're, we're talking less than $1,000 yeah. in, in 26 weeks. Mm -hmm. I think we just vote this thing. It yeah. equates to the two dollars we gave at the highway for yep. Sydney well, and Donald. Yeah, so okay. were so was, I'm kind of thinking that it would be like an eighty dollar a week stipend for because she's working about forty hours at this point right now. Well, she, um, I know she she's working been more in like she, thirty. Well, yeah, she's been treasurer. in on Fridays too. She comes in on Fridays. I think it's been like thirty-two as treasurer. So if we did like Somewhere a seventy, around. so if we did like a uh, like a like a seventy dollar a week stipend, that would would probably equate to roughly the same thing during that period of time. Just one one other point. I mean, I, I know the, the principle is something, but also the dollar amount is not great, and just with my personal knowledge and how much time and effort she's put in, I would think that even trying to compensate her for the past several months when she's been doing a lot of work also, like, I mean, some, whatever the number is, I just think. That's why, yeah, that's that's why I think we just, think we we just, just do, get, we just do this. Do this. I'll, I'll do respect, Steve. Yeah. No, 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 maybe it's the words. Yeah. Okay. The structure of this, if you know, I want to get into a place where, oh, well, we have, we have an interview, you know, boom, and, yeah. and, and I, that's not what she is. Right. She's the assistant treasurer. Right. In, right. Yep. in the end, you're going to be looking for a treasurer and you're going to be offering them a salary yep. of $48,000, where you're going to have an assistant who makes $26 an hour who works 15 hours a week or yeah. so many right. hours a week they're not making mm. a salary. So even at $26 an hour, I guess you are actually fine. Going into next sure. Year. Okay. So, so let's. Uh, we'll do it. We're just going to do it. We'll do. We'll do them all together. Mary Lou. I had an accounting question. Laurie, right, you and the treasurer. Huh? Twenty-six. Sixty-one. Um, Twenty-six. Sixty-four. Um, the wage amount. Okay. Am I correct? You know, that, that's what I was thinking. Is that you and the treasurer's firm are not being paid on the wage amount? I, my firm is right now because of the way that your budget was set up. So the budget was never set up for fiscal year 20 to fund a consultant. Yeah. So I am paying my firm's invoices out of a wage account, which in the end is allowed. Um, right, because it it's contractor support. support. It's contractor yeah. support yeah. of the position. It mm -hmm. makes a giant mess for me, oh, and only me, when I go to do the schedule writing. Um, <laughs> because that's where you have to break up. That's where all those middle numbers, wages, and expenses make a huge difference. Um, what I and what I'm doing right now with Sarah's firm's invoices is I am paying her out of the treasurer wages account. I am still paying Holly out of the assistant treasurer account, and then we have a third line item called treasurer's consultant account, which has a very minimal amount of money left. I believe it's like twenty five hundred dollars. So I'm going to use that transfer to try money. to transfer to whichever account yeah. runs the lowest. But going forward, starting next year when we do the budget, when we do the budget for this year, I'm going to get rid of the accountant wages line. I'm going to call it outsourced accounting. It has its own mm -hmm. five thousand code. Surprisingly, the U.S. actually recognizes accountings that are outsourced. I'll put that code in. I'll get rid of the accounting line for wages. I'll get rid of the accounting clerk. And then whatever we so choose to do for treasurer. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we'll still have a treasurer wages because you don't have an outsourced treasurer. But we will get rid of your treasurer consulting line um, because you don't have one. Okay. Yeah, that sounds Let's do good. It, guys. Okay. But we'll do that. Yep. Oh, okay. So, so did we... Okay, we're, oh, we're, we're, we're just going to okay. go. All right, it. no, this is for um, Ryan. This is the highway department for Ryan Pomprion. And uh, we, he gets paid hourly also. And we had, Cindy had figured it out, I guess it was between 2669 and 2736, he was getting an hour. So the proposed set, um, hourly wage would be $31.25. And that brings it up roughly to about sixty-five thousand. Right, and that's what we said. That's what we said. Okay. And these are, and then this is for another one. It's for um, Luke Quadricelli. 
he's he's from the fire also, and that's to bring him up to minimum wage of uh, twelve seventy five. And Michael Laird, he's another one. He's just bring him up to uh, the minimum wage. And Michael Scott, the minimum wage. And Thomas Allen. And that's it. So I'd like to a motion to approve all Mo of these motion to approve. wage authorizations. Second. Any more discussion from anyone? Moving on. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Now we have, what do we, have? we have a resignation here. Um, it says, Dear Board of Selectmen, please accept this as a notice as my resignation as the chairman of the Brookfield Recreational Water Access Committee. Due to the fact that the town of Brookfield does not own South Pond Beach and the Division of Fishery and Wildlife's refusal to negotiate with the town to transfer ownership of said property, it has become an unsurroundable roadblock for the committee to secure physical and financial aid for the operation of the beach. Respectfully submitted, David R. Ayers. So David's frustrated yeah. with having to work with the state. I can well appreciate yeah. that. What I'd offer to the board is that I will set up a meeting in February or March to get the committee together to determine mm -hmm. If we can at least get buoys put in place and the kinds of things that we need to be doing and the cleanups and the like. And it's so. a shame to see him resi to resign. He's just frustrated. He's, I don't blame him. So I, I think the board will need to face in the future how we yeah. want to handle this, but we'll just look to next summer and see if we can just mo fumble along. Okay. So I will make a motion to accept that resignation. Yeah, motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now the next one is an appointment. Uh, on the Conservation Commission. And uh, we it came in from uh, Bob Falk. Uh, Mo motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's all set. All right. Now, this is another one. This is uh, now our next one here is to vote to support Tri Valley's grant application and their proposal for a housing initiative and CMRPC Housing Initiative Phase 2. So we've had several meetings mm -hmm. and uh, on, on uh, senior housing and, and the like, and some things have come out of it that are good. Yeah. So in the case of Tri-Valley, Tri-Valley is putting in a grant request to have a, a part-time person do nothing but housing referrals for seniors. So if they can get the money, they can get the grant, that's a good thing for all of us. So uh, with that, that would be the first letter that I'm asking that we endorse. So that's that. The second is that it, CMPC has volunteered to do uh, another grant of technical assistance where the, they would convene regional meetings four times a year, mm -hmm. plus give us a support and help with the ideas of the zoning and encouraging developers to come to the region and the like. So we, I would want to suggest that we continue to uh, promote these kinds of activities for our seniors. Um, we did have a meeting um, a couple of weeks ago where this report, oops, that's Tri-Valley, a report on housing did, was provided for, for last year. Uh, and one of the things that one would note in going through this report, of, there are two issues not now that have come to the front. First, the availability of housing, but also housing affordability. And with this, uh, if you look at the region, the regional towns, our region, uh, Brookfield's uh, affordability index for 2018 is not as uh, is better than West Brookfield's, but worse than everybody else. So again, I show a chart. You can't read it, but the point is that we have an affordability issue and we have a uh, availability issue, and so we need to continue to pursue ideas. Uh, one of those ideas were to promote accessory dwellings in law apartments, that that might be a way to be more affordable. Um, the second thing that we learned was that the mobile home parks provide 20% mm -hmm. of our seniors over 55 re residents or availability of housing. Um, what we've found is at least one of those um, manufactured home facilities could in fact expand, expand if the voters were, were to approve that. 
and so we need to consider whether or not that's something we should encourage or not and then I what we understand is that there's somebody actually coming to the Planning Board in February where they're going to be talking housing development so I think again I these letters of endorsement promote the idea that we're interested in supporting our seniors and I think we want to continue to do that. I agree a hundred percent thank you okay so motion to sign motion. Motion to sign. You already signed it. Yeah, I yeah. signed it. Motion to ratify. Motion to ratify. Any just. Yep. Twentieth, February twentieth, Congregational Church, and that will be Brookfield only. And Sharon has agreed to join us uh, to talk zoning or zoning bylaws. Uh, Beth, do you have any questions on this? Um, not at this time. Okay. All right. So all in favor of right. supporting these two? Aye. Aye. Right. Our next one, okay. Our next one is, um, these are two, um, two grants to be paid from uh, CBG from 2017. And we need all three signatures on these. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. missing in that report is the Donahue uh, population growth data that's not in that report yes Ken um, can you make the announcement please for tomorrow's birthday at early season yeah we're oh, going to do that on, under other oh there's another one too thank you okay. There's a bunch of them. Other? Yeah. Oh, we don't have anything like that. We're going to do a correspondence. Burning permits. Oh, burning permits. Okay. And we have to call the state dispatch. Okay. Okay. I now, it's burning. Dispatch. Yeah, re I'm sorry. Yeah. Region. Burning permits open tomorrow. Yes. The 15th, and yeah. how long till? April. April 1st. Yeah. Like April, April 1st. April 1st. Yeah. Okay, then they have get all the rest of the information for next next meeting. Yeah, and they, uh, normally I guess they call the dispatch, and the dispatch gives them a, a permit. A permit. No. To okay, do usually that. we put it up on the website, don't we? He usually does. I went looking for it today. I couldn't find it because Ken mentioned it to me, so I couldn't find. Because usually it tells you the number and everything to call, but yeah, it was we'll, on, have, we'll have it for next time. Yeah, it was on Facebook last week. I was on Facebook. Okay. Was it? 
Okay, do we want to start other? Well, yep. just, okay, other. We have um, the Office of Disability Grant Application Review Committee has uh, reviewed our project grant application for FY20 Municipal ADA Improvement Grant and has uh, provisionally approved a maximum grant of $61,775. Thank and you, Kathy. that's in due for, we'll want to thank Kathy LaRocca for that. The ramp. Yeah, for the ramp. It's for the ramp. Is it? Yes. Oh, okay. the scope includes the installation of an access ramp, replacement of the rear door, and installing an auto door opening, renovating the existing first floor restroom to be ADA compliant. That's it. An associate cost as referenced in grantee's application in the cost estimate project. And the, the maximum EOAF grant was authorized at that $61,775. Okay? Again, good job, Kathy. Yeah, good job to Kathy. She's doing a good job. Okay, the next one here is uh, from MassDOT, and this letter certifies that your community Chapter 90 money appointment Apportionment for fiscal year 2020 was $185,258. How does that compare to last year, Linda? Hmm? Do we know how that compares to last year? I think it's up a little bit. Mm. I, I think, think that's down a little it's bit. Down, exactly, it? yeah, it's down it's a little bit. I thought it was. Yeah. A, I thought it was and then it said he went, the amount includes money is, monies previously approved in Chapter 16 of the Acts of 2019 and the new supplemental amount of sixteen thousand eight hundred and forty two dollars that includes that that big figure includes that yeah that big figure includes that okay next one is from chad okay they're talking about um did you get dcr maybe that's in the wrong Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, this is for Sawmill Pond Dam. The Office of the Dam Safety acknowledges receipt of the emergency action plan dated November 2019 for the above reference dam. And then uh, chatter is um, from what it's, they're reorganizing, and I think the franchise is going to be held by Time Warner Cable Northeast LLC. And Charter may change the name of the cable franchise in the coming months. Uh, and there will be no change of control of the cable fran franchise uh, service until uh, they let us know. And if anybody has a problem with that, they can call Adam Falk at 202-733-5960. Okay. And this is another one. Uh, recently, it was on the electronic voting counting devices. Uh, Don, would you like to speak on this a little bit? Uh, the town clerk, uh, Don Fagno, and myself went to a briefing in Warren uh, last month in reference to uh, Turning Point, who was uh, provided uh, vote counting equipment throughout the state. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting uh, presentation, um, relatively simple to use. Uh, it's technology, so it's going to be a little difficult for some people, I'm sure. But uh, Mike Siri received a letter from CBG that they are looking at a regional uh, purchase so that I think it's five towns would uh, uh, could use the equipment yeah that's what he's got here okay yeah it said they're looking to acquire the equipment for regional use by four or five surrounding communities yeah. so th so the letter that Mike got just looking to see if the town would be interested in them looking uh, into if it's something that we would be interested hmm. in. This is town meeting. Yeah, for town meeting. Vote. Vote. Town meeting electronic voting equipment. Okay. Right. And, and again, it would be really expensive for one town to do it. It's about it's about twenty thousand dollars to buy them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if there's a grant, it could cost the town nothing. Uh, 
and it could. This is he's pursuing this, and that's what he's asking. Yeah. Does does the town would the town be interested in letting them look into that possibility? Yeah. Well, I, think I think they were looking yeah. for an answer, and either a, a yay or a nay by the seventeenth of January. I'll I'll agree to it. Make do we have a motion in terms of pursuing the grant to to yeah. purchase? I, I, to where I'm yeah. at twenty thousand yeah. bucks, and again, Don, that was what I saw for a number. Right. For the numbers of yeah. votes that we're going to have, so, so that, is, that seemed awfully steep to me. So it's, this is not a commitment for the twenty thousand. Right. Yeah. No, it, is, it just to, uh, the town, it's just to go ahead the with it. Yeah. Just yeah. To, if we would support them going ahead with it. Yeah. To, to investigate yeah. for sure. Okay. I'll make you like to make that motion. Yeah. A motion to continue. Uh, investigation. Looking, yeah, looking Evaluating into it. the proposal uh, with yeah. no financial commitment, yeah. maybe that's yeah. correct. That's yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. would be. Yeah, because yeah, because I, I mean the concept of it is great. It just seems, it, it does seem like a pretty he hefty upfront investment, yeah. and renting it isn't much better. No, no. <laughs> a lot. Of, I know a lot of the communities have had these previously. They've been going with yeah. these. It's, they say it's much easier for your town meetings to run. Okay, a motion to support this? Yeah, to continue okay. to evaluate. Yeah, to, yeah, to continue to, yeah. Sure, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now this is another one from the Town Hall Improvement Committee. Um, they were considering installing two lock boxes in the front lobby of the Town Hall. One box would be for the water and the other one would be for the tax collector. And Absolutely. The, and so the town hall. What? Those are the two yeah. uh, offices that yeah. have indicated interest. Mm -hmm. We could install the RISA lockbox in the uh, in the town hall now, but very similar to that one. Uh, we could install it, install the two of them mm -hmm. in the window at the ticket window without damaging it. Okay. Uh, and there would be room if other departments also decided they would. Yeah. Okay. Motion to move forward. I second. So, yeah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Thank and you. that is it. And I'd like to, anybody else has something to say? I just wanted to uh, uh, raise the question of uh, getting the job description settled for the Yeah. or to give the personnel committee some guidance about how much responsibility would be included in that the town administrator job description yeah. because the grade of it would be uh, would, would be determined by the kind of duties that the mm. board was working yeah. we would talk yeah we had talked about that and then we talked about it at the personnel board meeting last week and I did provide yeah. a number of sample job descriptions yeah. Linda last week. Okay. So. Oh, no, you didn't. You didn't give them to me yet. I have. Oh, they're in the office. Okay. So we'll just have to maybe set up a, a day meeting to maybe do that. Right, and then. And then. What, what bothers me is that we won't have the audit until the summer. I know. And so we really would be looking to you and uh, for any any inputs specific to the financial responsibilities of the town. Mm. And so that that would be a set of inputs that I think would be very important. But I, it's really kind of two steps. One is to decide what the job description includes. Mm -hmm. What level of responsibility are you going to be looking to them to supervise uh, key department heads? Are you going to, you know, what, I, we don't need to get into it here, but then, then that job would get graded. And yeah, that that's what the personnel board does. We'll grade it. Board, mm -hmm. and that would set up a salary range for that position. Then the question becomes, okay, what can we afford? Is it going to be full-time or part-time? Mm -hmm. uh, again, that would be something the board would want to talk about, mm -hmm. and that might go back and forth as to uh, what our financial situation yeah. is. But uh, we can't really talk money until we know yeah. Yes, we um, understand that. So we can do our homework before the meeting. Could we get copies of the what was provided by the personnel committee? Yeah, we can get those tomorrow. Is Lois coming in tomorrow? Lois. We can probably have Lois make them up. Okay, great. 
Okay. We'll set up a meeting. Yeah. And we'll set a meeting. Okay. Um, if, if that's all, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn at 819. You have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So what's yeah. the, what was the